Hey everyone, we're back here in the shop making progress on the Dark Arrow 1. Let's jump right in. All right, everyone, we have a little bit of an oddball project that we're working on today, but I'll talk you through it. So we're looking at the airframe is sitting inverted right now and we're working on the wing and specifically uh, this aft portion where the flap sits. And what we're doing is reinforcing the skin here. We didn't have any initial reinforcement in here. I had this plan for the structure I wanted to build up here. Uh, it was gonna be more of our hollow grid structure with uh, honeycomb ribs in here, but I changed course on that because uh, I think foam core is actually a better solution for adding structure here. So we have a foam core on our flaps and also our rudders and then a couple sections in the fuselage and we're going to use it here as well. Normally this would be installed with uh, when we infuse the carbon wing skins just in one go but because we changed course along the way uh, we're installing it now. This is something that we've been meaning to do for a while and now we're finally getting to it. So we've got the whole plane inverted so we have better access to this. And interestingly, the fuselage acts as just a nice fixture to hold the, the wing up in this inverted position. So we had to flip the fuselage over, we got it sitting on our carts, and then we placed the wing on top of it so we can get access to this uh, aft flap area. So what we've done so far, uh, we CNC cut out this foam core and got that all to the right size and shape, and then we're bonding it to the wing skin here. This is basically the underside of the wing skin and it's a two-step process. So first we're positioning and bonding the foam core in place. After that cures, we're gonna come back and add uh, the carbon fiber skin on top. We could do it in one go, but uh, there's a little bit of a risk if we try to do it in one pass that the foam core could shift. And the position of this is a little bit critical just because the geometry is tight. We don't want the flap and the controls interfering with this foam core when this all is closed up in, in the right position. So uh, yeah, the position's critical. We wanna make sure that we get that right. So we're going through that first and then installing the additional layers of carbon fiber on top of this. What we did to bond it in place, we just pre-wet out the carbon with some uh, laminating epoxy. And then we bonded the foam on top by wetting out the foam with a mixture of uh, glass microspheres and epoxy kind of mixed in a slurry. That's pretty standard. Uh, composite aircraft manufacturing techniques there for like a wet layup process. So we got to employ that a little bit here, at least for the prototype. So this one is vacuum bagged in place right now. Uh, the vacuum bag is holding in place and, and crushing it down to make sure we got good contact between the foam and the skin all along this part. Over on this side, uh, we haven't pulled vacuum yet, so we can pop over there in a second. But here you can see how tightly this is uh, sucked down and held in place. So this definitely is not going to be moving while it's curing. So uh, it's gonna cure basically overnight. We got really nice warm weather. You can probably see I'm sweating. So that's good weather for getting epoxy to cure. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll do uh, the second step of this operation. So let's hop over here. I'll show you what this looks like before we pull vacuum. Okay, so over here, uh, we have not pulled vacuum yet. You can see the vacuum bag is loose. And the process for installing the vacuum bag, we put tacky tape down on the wing skin all around the perimeter of the foam and then put the vacuum bag on top of that. This is a little bit of a tricky process to get this to seal because uh, that peel applied carbon fiber surface finish on this interior of the wing skin is a little bit rough. So uh, it's just not as nice as like a mold surface where you have a, a really good sealing surface. So we have to really work the tacky tape down in there to make, make sure it seals. We got a vacuum gauge that we're able to check the integrity of the vacuum when we're sucking this down. Um, and it's yeah, also a little tricky just because uh, we're working around this foam and we don't want to disturb it. So um, yeah, when we get into production though, we'll have this foam installed and integral in the upper wing skin and that will be installed during the infusion process. So it'll be more of a one-step operation. So uh, we're going to get this sucked down and then let this cure. So we're pulling a vacuum on this right now. We like to start by going a little bit slow as we pull the vacuum to make sure that the uh, bag is in position correctly. We're not getting any weird uh, wrinkles or um, just anything weird's happening. So you can see it sucked down now. 
it's looking pretty good. And then we'll open the valve all the way and, and pull full vacuum to get this good compaction. Last time we talked, I showed the sump for the fuel system. I talked about the overall architecture. We've been making a lot more progress on that, so let's talk through it really high level, some of the key things there. So I've got the fuel system and the plumbing all modeled up. I'm not gonna go through all of that, but I've got all the lines coming out of the sump, going to the engine, going to the venting, and then also to the sight gauge, which I wanna talk about quick. So I modeled up quick and machined out a sight gauge. So this is just a two-piece phenolic component and we're able to monitor fuel level from both the left tank and the right tank. And I've got the lines created, which are gonna come from the tanks into our sight gauge here. So this is gonna sit on the seat back in between the pilot and co-pilot. The sight gauge is gonna allow you to visually confirm the fuel level for both the left and right tank. We're also gonna be monitoring it electronically through a pressure gauge, but we want to have a backup system just in case to double check all of our systems there. Fuel pumps. We have two fuel pumps for the Dark Arrow 1. They're gonna sit in parallel. That is for redundancy. If one fuel pump goes out, you can switch over to the other fuel pump. So originally we had these hooked together in parallel through a tube manifold. So we built this all up and had that connected on either end of these fuel pumps. We've gone away from that. We're gonna to go to a manifold setup. So I've modeled that up. And the reason for that is we want it to be a little bit more compact. There are off the shelf solutions that bring these together in parallel and act as a manifold. We looked into those. They weren't gonna work for our setup and our tight space claim. And they also didn't incorporate the fuel uh, shutoff valve, which will help bring all this together tighter, a lot more than this and an off the shelf solution. I've got the stock on order for that, so I'm gonna be machining that out next week and then continuing with the rest of these fuel lines. Uh, there's a question that was brought up about venting in the last video and how that all works. We've got the wing in a good position now in the, the fuselage, so let's go over there and take a quick look at that. Someone had asked, how are the wing tanks vented? So I'm in front of the wing right now, the wing is inverted. And if you take a peek at the end of the wing here, you can see two vent lines coming out from our tank. So the tank doesn't start right out at the tip, it actually starts a little bit back from there and then goes all the way to the root. And we have two vent lines on each wing, so four total, and those vent, if you take a look, the bottom side of the wing here, there's two little holes and that vents out to atmosphere. So I think there's a little bit confusion there. Is it vented into itself? Uh, this is how it vents out to atmosphere. So I just wanted to clarify that and I thought this was a good way to describe it since the wing is on the fuselage and easier to show that way. I've been turning my attention to the engine block here and all the wiring that needs to come back to our firewall. And it's been kind of a tricky puzzle getting all the wiring routed in such a way that uh, it doesn't interfere with existing infrastructure. I'm pretty happy with the arrangement I have right now. And as you can see, I've got one mil spec connector already done here. This connector ties in all the kind of miscellaneous sensors and power that are not part of our ECU plugs, which you see here. So these ones, I'm waiting on some solder sleeves to finish them up, but uh, once I get those in, I'll be able to get those plugged up. And what I'm really excited about is getting all this connected once again to our central tunnel avionics box, our instrument panel, and with all that kind of working in synchronous, we can start talking to the engine block and uh, kind of getting uh, the critical path here done to starting the engine. So pretty happy about that and excited to see um, what happens once it's all connected. So we 
are most of the way through the second stage of this project of reinforcing this uh, wing skin here, uh, right above the flap area. The foam that we installed earlier, we vacuum bagged it down and then let it cure overnight, peeled up the vacuum bag, and now we're putting in this carbon fiber over the foam core. So we've got a couple layers of cloth in here. We used a wet layup process. Our standard process is infusion, but for this specific project uh, where we're doing a little bit of a rework or a modification, uh, wet layup works fine for that. Next, we're gonna install some peel ply, which is basically uh, <laughs> this material here that we're gonna lay this on top of the carbon fiber. It soaks up a little bit of excess resin and then we'll peel it off afterwards and that leaves a nice surface finish that is prepared for uh, secondary bonding operations. We're gonna have to bond in some brackets here at the root that um, constrain some of the hardware for the flap actuation. So we'll move on to that. All right, everyone, that's all we've got for this video. We've got a lot of other projects going on, but we'll save that for the next one. If you've got a question, leave it down below and we'll try to get to you. Otherwise, catch you in the next video.